What's going on guys and welcome back. We are back to some snowmobile videos for now. Um, this video is actually a little bit different. I'm actually not in the video except for right now and at the end I'll talk a little bit. Um, but this is actually going to be Bruce and Whitney. You guys obviously know Bruce, you know who he is. Um, you guys have met Whitney if you go back uh, beginning of this past winter. Um, I talked to her at one of the trade shows. Um, she is uh, pretty involved with one of the snowmobile clubs in Massachusetts. She does a lot for them. Um, she's very involved in the sport in general. Um, and obviously she's a female, which is awesome. We love seeing the female riders and giving them a hand. But anyway, Whitney helps Bruce out from time to time. And we've all kind of been, you know, pretty close over this past year. And uh, Whitney has a 22 Assault 850. And uh, we're strictly a trail rider, but in the last year or so has gotten into the more kind of off trail, um, boondocking-esque uh, riding, which is great because that's not something me and Bruce do a ton. So it's fun uh, to kind of get our brains to switch. But anyway, she reached out to us and, and wanted some insight on what she could do to get her sled to work a little bit better off trail. So of course, you know, me and Bruce get on the interwebs and uh, I start on all the forums and seeing kind of what guys are talking about. And, uh, you know, we wanted to do one thing at a time to kind of see. So this is our starting point, but Bruce kind of took over. He did some video and then Whitney showed up and she took over and then she did an overview um, of the product, which is a mountainside uh, spindles that are for an assault. They're a uh, offset and raised, which Bruce talks about. And, uh, but yeah, that's, this is the video. Um, hope you guys like it. Again, I tried to go back to some snowmobile stuff. Me and Bruce have some things on the work too, um, coming up here in the next couple weeks. So. Uh, stay tuned, but here is the video on Mountainside Products Offset Spindles. Hey guys, I'm back at the south side here. Jesse's not here this week, but we're gonna, um, we're gonna work on this assault. We're gonna change it to a narrow front end using the spindles that come from Mountainside Products. And uh, when we get that done, we're gonna, we're gonna go through what we did and, and what it takes to do it and what you end up with. Okay, so one of the things we're going to be doing is we have to loosen up top ball joint, bottom ball joints, and steering ball joints. So we're going to be taking those out, and when we go to put that stuff back together, I'm going to show you what we have to watch out for. Okay, I just want to show you some of the differences on the spindles. Besides the point of these making the machine narrower, when we get it on there, we're going to lose probably two inches of width on the sled, so it side hills a little easier. They're also longer, so you're your point from your ball joint to the bottom where the where the ski is mounted there's about an inch this was either an inch or an inch and three eighths difference I'll find that out and uh, what it'll do is it'll pick the front of the sled up a little bit and make it want to climb up on the snow a little better and uh, track angle will be a little bit different okay so when we're putting these spindles on the one thing you want to make sure even whether you're using the stock spindles or these spindles but when you take them apart you put them back together you always want to make sure that you have a washer on the top and a washer underneath. And then the ball joint has two flats on it. And these flats are made so that you can put that 17 millimeter wrench on there and tighten it up. But when you're tightening it, you want to make sure that those flats are perpendicular to the sled. Okay, you don't want it to be like that because the idea is, is there's a lot of pressure back and forth when this is going through its travel and you want to have all that surface area you can that way and it's the same way it is on the on the ball joint for the tie rod end same deal you want to make it so that those are perpendicular to the sled so that you know when that's trying to move it has more surface area and that also has a washer that you want to have right underneath that so that that these things aren't digging into the aluminum that the spindle is made out of there's a steel washer and that's what you tighten against now we're going to put it together and we'll tighten everything up it won't vibrate and loosen these have nylon lock nuts on them anyway but it um but once you use a nylon lock you know they're they don't have quite the locking that they have the first time so you put some loctite on them and it keeps the vibration from loosening them so we got everything all tightened up and we set it up so it's as narrow as it can be because Whitney's going up north riding the powder and she wants to see the biggest difference of being able to tip the sled up. So it comes with two spacers for each ski. We put them both to the inside so the ski is as narrow as it can be. 
So with that being said, now we're gonna, we're gonna align the front end. So I've got a straight edge going down the side of the track, and then we're gonna measure from the center of the carbide bolt in the rear and the center of the carbide bolt in the front and get the skis so they're straight. And in the end, we're gonna be probably towed out an eighth. That's what we're looking for. No different than if we're for trail sled or whatever. We're, we're usually trying to be a 16th to an eighth out, no more than, a, no more than 3 sixteenths out. So this is what we're going to be doing now is we're, um, we're going to be setting the toe. One of the ways you can do that is you can open up the hood and you can reach down inside to get the inside nut on the tie rod. But the easiest way to do it is you have your rubber boot right here. And this has a, a, uh, a slide that slides on this tie rod. There's a zip tie that holds it onto the rubber. You just cut the zip tie, take the slide out, and then turn the ski all the way and you can reach and you can get that inside nut. So you can do it all from the outside. So that's definitely the easiest way to do it when you're doing toe. You just, you know, if you know it's off, you might as well loosen the nuts first, then center the, center the handlebars, and then you can pivot the, the tie rods which way they gotta go. And then afterwards, go side to side, lock up the nuts, and you're good to go. Okay, so we got it all put that together now. We've got it straightened out, you just were towed out an eighth of an inch. And uh, center to center on this is like 39 and a half. So stock is right around 42. So it's a, a really big change for what she wants to do with it. And we, and as I stated before, the spacers are on the inside. So if we want to go back out again, we can make this like 41 and three quarter, which would be almost what it was. So it's really a, a good, good setup to be able to do both things you want to do and what, what you're doing on a weekend. And then with that higher clearance it has, it's got really good snow clearance underneath. So when you are trying to get up on, on um, soft snow, you're not, you're not pushing so much snow with the A-arms. So I think it's gonna be a really good combination. Hey guys, my name's Whitney and I ride a 2022 A50 Assault, um, previously shown in this video, I'm sure at some point. Um, and what we were doing was swapping out the stock spindles to the mountainside spindles. So I received these spindles really late in the season, unfortunately, and Bruce from Southside was super kind to be able to swap them over for me so that I could try to get one trip out of them. <laughs> um, so I was able to take a trip north for a long weekend to try these spindles out because I was super excited to try them. And unfortunately, the weekend that was there was just less than ideal conditions. It was icy. It was nice weather, but it was just the snow had crusted. You had that big layer of crust um, and we waited. You know, we were hoping that if we waited for the afternoon, then the sun would hit it and it would soften it up a little bit. But unfortunately, we were just really fighting with ourselves. Um, so I wasn't able to get a full gist of the differences in the stock spindles versus these new spindles. So I can give you a little bit of what I was able to tell. Um, the biggest difference that I noticed with the narrower ski stance that we were trying to accomplish with these new spindles was that the ability to tip the sled up on to its side was a lot easier. With the narrower ski stance, I felt more of that tippy mountain sled vibe. Um, not necessarily vibe, but I was able to sense more of that mountain sled tippy front end, um, you know, making it a little bit more easier to stick on its side or maneuver through snow if it were to have been snow. But unfortunately, you know, I would pop it up on to the side hill to attempt my very best and just you were fighting the ice so much that it just wasn't it just wasn't working for me unfortunately um so with that being said i really wanted to be able to fully review these spindles for you um but just because of the conditions i wasn't it wasn't feasible for me um so I would like to thank Mountainside Products for the spindles. I'd like to thank Southside for the ability to help me create a sled to cater to what I'm trying to do. Not really sure what that is yet, <laughs> um, but with the guidance of 
Jesse and Bruce from Southside. I am slowly trying to figure out what I want to do with this snowmobile. I have primarily been a trail rider, so that's why I got the Assault, because I ride the trail so much, but, you know, when you come up to openings or, you know, you want to be able to have some fun. So that's that was the purpose of me getting the Assault. So we're trying to kind of gear it more towards that off trail now that I'm starting to dabble more into it. Um, so hopefully these two <laughs> are able to help me figure that out with the, without losing that, that crisp trail ride in it as well. Um, which is kind of why we started with the spindles so that, you know, you can change that ski stance pretty easily and bring it back to that wider stance and not lose the trail steering. Um, so I guess if I were to know that I'm going for an off trail weekend, I could narrow them up and with those spacers. And then if I know that I'm going and riding primarily trail, I could widen them up again um, so that I don't lose the ability to ride the trail as smoothly and as aggressively as I do. So I'm super excited to see what we come up with in the future. I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more of the assault with these videos as well. Um, and trying to cater to, you know, creating a mountain sled version of it and a really aggressive trail sled with it as well. Um, so again, thank you to Mountainside for the spindles. Hopefully I get a full season out of them next year um, where I'm really able to provide a full review on them. And that I would say was my primary goal was to try to be able to make it easier to maneuver on those side hills, which I think would give me a bigger advantage when I am off the trail versus with that wider front end. I struggled quite a bit this year. <laughs> um, but you know, you live, you learn. And with that being said, feel free to follow me on Instagram or TikTok at WhitneyR4. And feel free to continue to ask questions or suggest new ways that we could maybe manipulate this crossover sled to try new things. Um, I'm open to ideas, so. With that being said, keep riding. So that's gonna do it. Big shout out to Bruce for uh, kind of grabbing the camera and taking the bull by the horns and saying, hey, if Jesse's not here, I'm gonna video. So as always, big shout out to Bruce. And uh, big shout out to Whitney for you know getting on camera and, and doing the overview, even though they had really crap conditions. Um, she still was able to feel that that thing is easier to get up on edge. So I'm excited for next year when we have some actual snow for her to try it and really see. And then once we do that, we'll kind of progress again and you guys will be in tune on all of it. But uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one. This is 12 inches. <laughs>